Hello everyone, I am Dr. Jolsna and welcome to my channel Prostohub. So today in this session we are going to discuss an important short note from your MFP section that is the hollow bulb obturator. So I have already done a session on prosthetic rehabilitation of dentate maxillectomy patient in detail that included the classification of maxillary defect, the various effects, the various treatment options available, the preoperative considerations, the different phases of prosthodontic treatment in maxillary defect, the obturator processes, the classification, delivery, post insertion follow up and digital technology in prosthetic rehabilitation. So some of you have requested to do a session on the hollow bulb obturator, how to write it for a short note. So here it is. So let us see the contents. So the contents can include introduction, the definition, the hollow bulb obturator, the parts, the advantages, the post-surgical obturator processes, general considerations, fabrication of hollow bulb obturator, the various methods and conclusion and references. So before getting into detail, I request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are uh, finding them useful and if you are new to this channel Prostohub, please please do subscribe and support me. If you have any queries, any suggestions, feedbacks or any topic that needs to be discussed, you can comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id. So let's begin. So we know that patients with palatal defects suffer functional difficulty and aesthetic deformity. So the maxillofacial prosthodontist replaces the lost tissue by obturator which not only restores function but also uh, reclaims the patient's well-being. So obturator we know that it is a prosthesis to close a palatal defect in a dendulous or an edendulous mouth and the degree of extension depends upon the configuration of the defect, the character of its lining tissue, functional requirements for retention, support and stabilization of the prosthesis. So, when we do this, the remaining structures are subjected to continuous stress from such large heavy obturator, jeopardizing the health of the tissue and compromising patient's function and comfort. So one of the method to reduce the bulk of the prosthesis is to fabricate a hollow bulb obturator, which reduces the weight of the prosthesis, improving the comfort of the patient. Coming to the GPT-9 definition of obturator prosthesis, it's a maxillofacial prosthesis used to close, cover or maintain the integrity of the oral and nasal compartments resulting from a congenital acquired or developmental disease process that is a cancer cleft palate osteoradionecrosis of the palate. The prosthesis facilitates speech and deglutition by replacing those tissues lost due to the disease process and can as a result reduce nasal regurgitation and hypernasal speech and improve articulation, deglutition and mastication. So basically it is a maxillofacial prosthesis that is used to close a congenital acquired or developmental uh, defect or opening and in order to facilitate speech and deglutition by replacing the lost tissues. So we have already discussed the classification of the obturator processes that is various classification are there and according to the phase of a prosthetic construction mm, three types are there that is a surgical or feeding plates, interim or transitional obturator and definitive obturator. So we have discussed in detail about the classification in the section of uh, prosthetic rehabilitation of dentate maxillectomy patient. Those who want to uh, know in detail please do watch that session. Now, the definitive hollow bulb obturator is usually fabricated at around 6 months to 1 year after surgery and the timing of fabrication depends upon many factors like the size and location of the defect, healing of the surgical wound, prognosis of tumor recurrence control and effectiveness of present obturator. Now let us see the parts of a hollow bulb obturator. So it has got a hollow bulb that is actually the part of the prosthesis which is used to um, rehabilitate the defect part. So that fills the defect that is the bulb part. So it supports the facial soft tissue and helps in restoring facial form and it also provides support to the content of the orbit to prevent ophthalmic complication. And next is the oral part that is the remaining portion of the prosthesis. So the oral part will have a false teeth, false palate and ridge and it restores patient's form and function. It has the posteriors for mastication and anterior teeth for aesthetics. So 
the um, if it is an edentulous case the oral part will be more like a complete denture whereas for a partially edentulous case the design will be compared to a removable partial denture so it has got a metal framework so this is about the parts of hollow bulb obturator coming to the advantages of hollow bulb obturator the most important one is weight reduction then it helps in resonance for speech production and so it's comfortable for the patient it also decreases the pressure to the surrounding tissue that is aids in deglutition and encourages the regeneration of tissue and it reduces the self consciousness of wearing dentures it does not cause excessive atrophy and physiologic changes in the muscle balance and it enhances retention so there is open bulb design as well as closed bulb design usually the closed bulb design is more commonly advocated compared to that of open design so we have discussed about the design in our session of prosthetic rehabilitation of maxillectomy patient next is the considerations for a post surgical obturator prosthesis this we have already discussed in our maxillectomy rehabilitation session so you can include this uh, part also in your short note of hollow bulb obturator now coming to the fabrication of hollow bulb obturator so review of literature reveals numerous methods for fabrication of hollow bulb obturator so in this session i'm going to discuss some of the important classic methods of hollow bulb obturator fabrication so basically there are two types you can uh, make it one piece that is one piece hollow bulb obturator or you can fabricate it as two piece that is the bulb part and the oral part separately and then join them so first we are going to discuss the fabrication of a two piece hollow bulb obturator and this is palmer's method of fabricating so here make the impression that includes the palatal defect to be obturator and then on the, to the impression pour a stone cast and you can see here there is a key at the border of the cast so this is the key at the border of the cast so you have to make a key okay now after the cast is made and the key is also made apply a suitable separating media to the stone surface and sculpt in clay to the palatal defect as well as the missing alveolus so you apply the separating media and then you sculpt in clay to the defect area now once you sculpt the clay into the palatal defect now uh, pour a plaster cap over the clay build up so this plaster should include the keys that you made in the master cast so now the plaster cap is ready and once it is set remove the plaster cap and from that take out the clay and discard now you have got the plaster cap of the defect next coat the tissue side of the plaster cap as well as the cast with the separating media so you apply separating media over the tissue side of the plaster cap as well as over the cast and then apply thin layer of self cure acrylic resin to the cast and inner surface of plaster cap and let it cure so apply a thin layer over the cast as well as the inner surface of the plaster cap next acrylic resin is also added to the border of e as well as f so this is the plaster cap that is f so borders of f as well as the borders of the defect and also to the border of the d that is adjacent to e so at this junction also apply acrylic resin and then invert the plaster cap into the master cast so you place back the plaster cap onto the master cast and make sure that the acrylic resin inside is kept moist with the monomer before closure so check the key for the proper fit of the uh, plaster cap and also allow the acrylic resin to cure and once it is set and cured remove and finish the bulb so this is the fabrication of a hollow bulb obturator in two piece that was described by palmer et al next we are going to discuss chalian's procedure for hollow bulb obturator so he has described it in two ways that is the procedure for one piece as well as two piece so let us see the procedure for two piece hollow bulb obturator so here first the master cast with the clasp adapted is been waxed using the base plate wax of approximately 2 mm thick so this is the base plate wax that is adapted onto the master cast and this include the defect area the base medial posterior labial walls except the palatal ridge side of the defect area so only the palatal ridge of the defect area is the one that is left now modeling clay is been placed into the defect area and then the with the patient's normal palatal ridge that is used as a guide 
the false palate and ridge are shaped and conned out onto the clay. But you have to leave approximately a 2 millimeter thickness because the wax pattern has to be conned out onto the reshaped palate. So over this again we have to uh, adapt the base plate. So approximately 2 millimeter thickness space should be left. And then here tin foil is used as a separating medium. So tin foil is adapted onto the conned out clay and then it is adapted with the base plate wax okay and that is the lid the false palette and the ridge so this area is been waxed using the base plate wax and then this area is been separated so uh, after the wax lid is separated the tin foil and modeling clay from the master pattern are discarded so once you remove this you can discard the tin foil as well as the clay so you got the false palette with the that is made with the base plate wax now you have to uh, process it so this is boiled out and processed with heat cure methyl methacrylate separately okay and then the two parts are deflasted and after that the margin of the lid portion so this is the lid portion so the margin is being perforated or un made undercut for retention and then the two pieces are joined that is by uh, applying monomer to the adjoining periphery and then joining the two parts by using a dove like mixture of self curing methyl methacrylate. So we get the final hollow bulb obturator that is made in two parts. So hope you have understood. So first what we are doing is uh, applying the clasp and making a uh, wax pattern using the base plate wax then into the open defect area condering the clay over that tin foil is used as a separating medium and again it is waxed and this portion is taken separately and then these two parts are processed separately and then merged together so this is the procedure for a two piece hollow bulb obturator by chalian next let us see the procedure for one piece hollow bulb obturator so this is a simple and accurate method of using an acrylic shim to uh, process a hollow bulb obturator without lines of demarcation. So Chalian always preferred closed bulb obturator because he strictly believed that open bulb obturator should be completely avoided because it is unhygienic, foul smelling and it is unpleasant for the patient to tolerate and easy for the technician to construct. So let us see the steps for procedure of one piece hollow bulb obturator. So here uh, like every other case after the wax trial the danger is waxed and it is flasked and boiled out in the usual manner. Then after this the acrylic shim has to be constructed. So first the undercut areas in the defect should be blocked. So the undercut in the defect area has to be blocked and then the entire defect area should be relieved with base plate wax. Okay, Even the upper portion, the um, top portion of the flask that is uh, defect is also been relieved with base plate wax and then three stops that is deep enough to reach onto the uh, underlying stone of the master cast are placed in the wax that is for the proper positioning of the acrylic ship so three stops are placed that should reach the underlying stone okay and this three stones are placed and as i said a base plate wax is also placed in the top half of the flask over the teeth and the palate and this forms the top wall of the acrylic ship next an auto polymerizing acrylic resin is used so in a dove like stage uh, auto polymerizing acrylic resin is mixed and rolled to about 2 millimeter in thickness and this layer of resin is contoured over the wax relief in the defect side and another layer over the wax relief onto the top half of the flask. So both up and down you have to apply a layer of acrylic resin that is in the dove stage and then the flask is closed and allowed to set for a minimum of 15 minutes okay so curing happens at this time so after curing the flask is opened and the wax has been flushed off by using a stream of boiling water 
so we got an acrylic shim here with three stops okay now the excess of the acrylic can be removed from the shim and it can be placed back into position using the three stops and check for proper positioning of the acrylic shim now after this we have to do the heat processing so uh, the heat cure acrylic is mis mixed and prepared in the usual manner and then this is applied into the bottom portion of the defect and then you place the acrylic shim place it uh, position it properly using the stops and then over the acrylic shim also that is on the upper portion top flask top top part of the flask the heat cure acrylic is placed and then the usual manner of processing so this has been flasked then um, cured and then deflasked finished and polished so we get a hollow bulb obturator in one piece that was made using fabricating a uh, acrylic shim so this is the one step procedure so these are the advantages of a one piece hollow bulb obturator that is there are no lines of demarcation on the danger to discolor and the undercut areas of the defect are thick enough to allow for adjustment if necessary and it is a simple technique and consumes very little laboratory time than a conventional danger and it is an accurate technique so just you have to make a acrylic shim so this is a simple and accurate method of using an acrylic shim to process a hollow bulb obturator mainly without lines of demarcation next let us see the other techniques of uh, fabricating a hollow bulb obturator even the different materials that is used for manufacturing the obturator as well as for uh, enhancing the retention so it was peeny in 1965 he described a technique to fabricate inflatable obturator using a balloon and then par and gardner used the swing lock design for obturator fabrication and polysoys used light cure danger based resin and resilient liner for obturator fabrication and again fluid resin was used by browning and kindernet and grossman and mudger used resin bonded attachments for the maxillary obturator retention and in case of extensive defect of maxilla retention uh, may be compromised so in such cases creasel et al suggested use of zygomatic implants for the retention of the processes and then with the uh, improvement in digital technology now it is possible to fabricate maxillary processes with greater accuracy using the methods of stereolithography and rapid prototyping and digital technology in processes fabrication we have already discussed in the uh, maxillectomy rehabilitation session so please do watch that session and finally concluding our session the management of patient with maxillectomy requires a multidisciplinary approach and in any obturator case the affected palate provides only limited tissue support for any prosthesis which rests on it the contemporary materials and techniques for obturator processes can provide solution for various clinical conditions so depending upon the case the operator should select the best suitable material and technique for successful rehabilitation so it should restore the function it should enhance the retention and thereby improving quality of life of the patient so these are the textbooks and articles that i have referred for this session and thank you all for watching this session and please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful and if you are new to this channel prosto hub please do subscribe and support me and if you have any queries suggestions feedbacks any topics that need to be discussed please do comment below the video or you can mail me at this mail id so it's bye from prosto hub until our next session